What up, party people? It's your boy, BQ, and a kick out. Welcome to the Negative BQ channel. This is your Impact Lounge, Impact Wrestling review for 8-15-24. This was highlighted by Nick Nemeth versus Josh Alexander. Uh, dropping another later podcast on you guys. Uh, normally, I would try to do it Saturday morning. That's usually, you know, usually what I try to do. But my dumbass... Um, so as I, as I mentioned, I'm on active duty right now. So when I do that, I'm working Monday through Friday. I get off 4 p.m. I get home about 5.30. My dumbass. So if you guys don't understand how this works, if you're a reservist or you're a guardsman and you're activated, that, take, that takes precedence to your job. Like your job can't be like, oh, no, you can't go. That's first and foremost. So all I have to do is being, you know, be like, hey, I'm being activated. Uh, give the paperwork to my boss, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But my dumbass on Friday, they sent me a text and they were like, we're really hurting tonight. Uh, because we had a bunch of dudes had to go up to, we have like a sister, I guess you could say a sister company like up in Reno uh, where we'll send people up to work sometimes. And we were like pretty much low manned at my job. So they were like, can you, can you come in? So my dumbass worked till four o'clock Friday, got home five thirty, slept like three hours, and then went to work. <laughs> so I slept Saturday morning when I would normally attempt to be doing a podcast. Even when I work, um, I'll I'll usually kind of knock out the podcast before I go to sleep. Uh, but in in that case, that that just wasn't happening. So um, yeah, so here we are Sunday night doing the pod and uh, talking a talking an episode of Impact that I. Pretty, pretty, uh, I don't want to use words stacked. I feel like Josh Matthews if I say that, but just pretty strong, pretty strong card they put together uh, for this episode. There was a couple matches that I felt were kind of TNA plus worthy. And normally I'd get on here and be like, why are they giving this away for free? But I mean, the fact of the matter is this is the, the deepest roster they've had in a while. I was running down uh, a few weeks ago how deep the main main event scene actually is. I mean, you're talking about the six people in the main event at Slammiversary, and then you can throw Sammy Callahan in there. You can throw Santana in there. You can throw Eddie Edwards in there. Like there's, uh, there, there's all these dudes that you can throw in there. So it's a pretty deep roster right now. This isn't like a year ago where you got like four main eventers. You know what I'm saying? So I guess they can get away with it. Um, but I still always have that concern that when the pay-per-view comes up that they don't have any fresh matches because they seem to go either really hard on the episodes or go really hard on the TNA plus shows. But as I said, it, it's a deeper roster right now. So I would imagine they can kind of get, get away with it and they can, um, they can load the tel television shows a little bit more. So they put together uh, what I thought was, was a pretty good episode here. One of their better episodes in a little bit. And the Tampa crowd is, is really killing it. This is, this is to me, and some of you may disagree. To me, this is the best crowd that they've had in really since I can remember. As far as the size, as far as how loud they are, being engaged, kind of knowing what's going on. Because if you've been to a TNA show, there's a lot of people at these shows who are just wrestling fans. They're not TNA fans. And I think that's the case here, too, because I think Joe Hendry uh, kind of drew some people out of Orlando. But I, I, to me, this is just, it, it was a good episode. Uh, there were some some results that very much caught me off guard. Uh, and there's always things that bother me. You know what I'm saying? Old Telegraph and Tom in the main event. We'll get, we'll get to that a little bit later. But this kicked off with X Division three-way. These are qualifying matches for... Uh, for emergence. That's not even for Bound for Glory. This is, this is emergence. So they're going very, very hard. Uh, building up to this show. Um, and it, we had Chris Bay versus John Schuyler versus Riley Osborne of Chase U. Um, Chase U is a very, I don't know, the dude that runs it is a total fucking goof. You know what I mean? But they, they have some pretty decent uh, people in that group. When I saw who was wrestling here, I posted in the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. I was like, 
I don't I don't even remember what I said, but I'm just like, gee, wonder who's gonna fucking win here, you know? Like, oh, I, I said hard to pick a winner, very sarcastically. I was pretty sure Chris Bay was winning this thing because if you look at the opponents, like, give me a fucking break, dude. Um, it really felt like the ABC were, were you know, we're both going to this thing, or at least one of them. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, this was this was a pretty um pretty solid match I, I wasn't like super engaged in it because i just thought chris bay was gonna win so i was kind of kind of waiting for it to be over you know what i mean uh john schuyler comes out we haven't seen the good hands the bad hands in in a minute in a hot 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 minute um and he came over it came out and i thought he did a pretty good job with his promo sometimes he the the fruit is a little low um so where it doesn't really get over but you know, I thought he did a good job here. This crowd was just very, very engaged with what was going on, going on. So uh, good on him. Good to see the good hands again. Uh, they're not like a great tag team, but, you know, it. I can appreciate when they bring someone on who hasn't been on the show in a few weeks and it just kind of freshens things up. Thank God Frankie Kazarian came out on commentary because uh, that just helps me hear all Tom and all... <laughs> And I can hear a different voice. So Frankie Kazarian comes out. And I thought it was really funny last week. I forgot to bring this up. That when he said he wanted a world title shot, there's a backstage segment. And then it cuts to the end ring. And, and uh, Tom Hannafin with fake outrage is like, doesn't Frankie Kazarian know you have to earn a title shot around here? When all the major champions are all fighting champions who are just fighting anybody. All you have to do is ask for a match. Um, and that's what he's doing. And they're acting like he does not deserve that opportunity. Like he has to earn his way, even though he was uh fucking final two at Slam Anniversary. Uh, but Josh Alexander was like the second or third guy eliminated. So I mean, I think he was the third guy. I think he was after Moose. So whatever, Tom. Uh, but yeah, thank God he saved us on commentary. Osborne hit a very nice shooting star press at the end. They rolled um uh I, I don't remember the whole sequence. I think Chris Bay was going for the win on uh, someone threw someone out of the ring. I don't know. I, I can't even remember that whole sequence, but uh, Riley Osborne wins. So they, they've got an NXT person on the card here coming up. So first NXT people person, excuse me, to wrestle, I, I guess, for the X Division Championship period, but uh, to be involved in Ultimate X, the return of Ultimate X that we get every four months. Can you imagine? The confusion last week when you know i often talk about the disconnect between the show that's being filmed and the fans in the arena and i've given all sorts of examples i've given my own personal experiences when you don't really know what the fuck's going on when you're there live can you imagine the fans when they announced it was a qualifying match for the x division championship and cheeseball mike bailey came out and wrestled with no explanation I can, I can only imagine they're looking at each other like they've got dicks on their foreheads and, and like what what is going on. Uh, then we got a segment. Nick Nemeth pulls up um, to an empty parking lot with the belt. Gia Miller just happens to be waiting for him. And they have a little fucking interview. This isn't even a real parking lot. This is just in the middle. Hey, pull up here in the middle of this lot. There's no actual parking spots. Uh, then we're going to do a fake interview. Then Santino is in the ring, the star of the show. He calls out Matt Cardona. And this, this lost me. Matt Cardona is saying he does not wrestle in this company. And Santino gives this roundabout explanation of how he's going to go to jail. The wrestler go to jail. I've said this before. I'm not saying they're going full Zack Ryder. That's not what I'm saying. But TNA would rather he be Zack Ryder than Matt Cardona. His, his goof doing goof segments. You're doing the attacking PCO when he's coming with the brick. I'm I'm okay with all that. But then to put him in a silly segment with Santino, you're going to jail if you don't if you don't wrestle PCO. So he has a contract. Tells him to look over it. Um, most likely, this is going to be some kind of Tampa street fight bullshit. 
or wherever this uh, maybe it's an emergence some kentucky fried street fight i don't know the reason i hate these street fights no dq and all this shit and i don't even know if i've even really explained this before usually i just get pissed off on the podcast that there's a street fight every other week the reason i don't like these is because you're hitting someone with chairs and you're hitting someone with weapons and they're going through tables and they're kicking out they're kicking out of the shit you know what i'm saying and then we're supposed to believe that uh, you know 15 minutes later brian myers is going to win with a fucking clothesline you understand what i'm saying so um especially in a company like tna where i'm always saying hey we don't really have a lot of great finishers you know we've got the c4 spikes and all that but we've got bullshit finishers too we the, the fucking danger zone the roster cut um i'm not going to go up and down I've, I've talked about the finishers before finishers before there's some bullshit finishers um that went that beat people but when you hit people with all these weapons outside the ring and they're they're bleeding or they're getting scratched up or they're but that doesn't win the match. You know, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's the um that's the issue I have. But this is definitely going a street fry route. I mean, don't don't even don't even try to bullshit otherwise. And then later in the episode, um, I'm fast forwarding here a little bit, but Cardona comes and, and says the money looks good, threw some extra zeros on there, which he most likely didn't. Uh, and instead they're going to do like a, a, a six man tag, which I have more interest in and it's the wedding party. So it's, um, Rhino, the fucking human fire hydrant. Uh, I guess PCO is in the match too, right? PCO and, um, Zaya Brookside against him. I think he said two mystery opponents. I don't remember exactly who he said. Or mystery partners. I know there's at least one mystery partner. When he attacked PCO, I don't think they um, they showed who was with him. They just showed tattoos. I'm very concerned. Uh, it could either be the motherfucker that was coming out with first class. I don't remember if he had tattoos or not. I'm very concerned that it's... um, What the hell is his name? He was an AEW, but he was an NXT for a little bit. The Brock Lesnar dude. That they said was the next Brock Lesnar. I'm real concerned it's him. I see a tatted dude, and I think he's tatted like that. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe he has no tattoos. Maybe I'm thinking of his partner in AEW. But I feel like he's he's all tatted up. I'm very worried that it's him. But um, maybe it's not. Maybe they showed the guy's face and I just missed it. I don't know. But I have a little interest in this six-man tag just because it's a mixed tag. Oh, and he'll have Steph Delander on his team too. So I have a little bit of interest in it being a, a mixed tag. I, me, I like mixed tags. I like intergender wrestling. I know that's probably not the majority of you guys, but I, I'm usually kind of into that stuff unless as as long as it's not goofy and silly. Um, Tasha Steeles takes on Giselle Shaw, and for whatever fucking reason, there's like three referees in this thing. In the history of wrestling, I've never seen. I shouldn't say never. If I could probably go back to the Attitude Era, or I'm sure there's a couple matches that have multiple referees. If the stipulation calls for it, cool. Giselle Shaw versus Tasha Steeles, who wrestled on Explosion, to to Tasha Steeles cheating against someone who's cheated her almost her entire time in TNA. But Santino really thought that it was necessary for like referees to surround the ring. So the goof ref is out there. The, the female goof ref is out there. And then Daniel spelled Spencer is only a half goof. So um, I enjoy the match because I like both of these girls. I've said before that I think Tasha Steeles is actually the best knockout on the roster. But I mean from a total package standpoint. The only thing she's missing is kind of the size. But... I think she she has everything. I'm very high on her. Um, I've always liked Giselle Saw very much. So I was into the match. We knew that Giselle was going to win. But the stipul I mean, my God, Giselle Shaw, I mean, not Giselle Saw, Chasa Steels wrestles like three times a year. I know I'm exaggerating, but we just don't see her that often on TV. This felt like an AEW angle where... And I know they still do this, even though I don't really follow the show like that. 
but when I was watching, you would have a match on Dynamite that they they semi built maybe on YouTube or something like that, and just no one has a clue what the fuck is going on. So this this was just two girls that we haven't really seen on TV a whole lot, and all of a sudden they're in this grudge match with multiple refs. The fans in the arena have to be completely confused why there are multiple referees out there. You know what I'm saying? So when I was at um Rebellion, I think it was Rebellion. It was whatever match had Frankie Kazarian versus Eric Young. That might have been hard to kill. I don't know. But it was the Full Metal Mayhem match. It sounds like hard to kill. Anyway, there was a spot where they threw the goof ref out of the ring. And he he landed fairly close to where I was sitting. And he hit, he hit the railing hard. He actually took a hell of a bump. And the, the fans ringside cheered him. They cheered the bump. They cheered the goof ref. Um, hitting the the uh the railings because they were chanting throughout the night because I call him this for a reason. He's the dude like first of all he has the super serious face. But you remember Slam Anniversary I was talking about it took like 60 full seconds for him to to remove the knockouts championships from the ring giving plenty of time for the militia to cheat. When you're at the live event and you're ringside it he does he does shit like that all the time. People have have chanted at him and yelled at him like you suck ref because he misses the most ridiculous things that are like right in front of his face. So when he was thrown out of the ring and he hit the guard the guardrails like people cheered it, you know what I'm saying? Um and it was at both shows that I was at. Even at even at fucking um Hard to Kill when I didn't sit, sit by the ring for the TV tapings and I sat in the general admission which is how I'm going to sit for now on. Cause number one, it's more comfortable at number two. I don't like being on TV, but I'm a, but even the people in general admission were like chanting at fucking Frank, the ref, Frank, the goof, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, Tasha Steeles um, and Giselle Shaw. So I'm kind of retracting on what I said about Giselle Shaw at bound for glory winning the championship, but I do think she's going to get a little bit of a push here. Um, I think she will get probably an Impact Plus, TNA Plus match with with uh, Jordan Grace sooner than later. I mean, Jordan's wrestling everybody, so why not? System comes out um, to cut their promo. Alicia, Alicia's doing a pretty good job with these, you know, you want to know something or whatever she says. It, like, it gets heat. It gets a reaction. Her whole time in TNA up to this point, even though I've been a freaking huge fan, obviously, uh, the shit she does gets no reaction. You know what I'm saying? Her baby face stuff got very little reaction. Uh, the promos backstage were really poorly done. And uh, in this heel role, she's kind of coming into her own. So, and that, it's always easier to be a heel than a baby face. Um, but she's coming into her own and she's, she's doing a good job and they're cutting a promo. And, and um, you know, they're basically saying they're, they're going to get right back to where they were. I would be invested in that if I would if it wasn't pretty telegraphed that Spitfire was going to take that belt off Alicia here pretty soon. Otherwise, I would think, okay, maybe there's a chance they all got their belts back, but um, probably not. I think there's a higher probability Eddie and Myers get the, the titles back, but I actually think the way things are going, I think first class is going to wrestle for the belts at um, and win them at some point, whether it's emergence bound for glory, I don't know. But I think they're they're doing this dissension shit with ABC. They're going right back to it. Um, so I, I do think that uh, first class is going to win the belt here pretty soon. Neither here nor there. They attacked Santana backstage earlier. They said he is not medical medically cleared, but of course he came out anyway, and they had the match. So I guess he was cleared. I don't know. They, I think they had the actual instead of the the fake doctor i think they had the actual doctor backstage there with them and this was a really good match i'm invested in pretty much any moose match for the most part i'm in, invested in a santana match i tell you guys all the time i love two guys who can fucking work um and i thought they put on a pretty good match here this was one of the ones that i said that you know this is a pay-per-view match it's a tna plus match they give it to us kind of early it was something that we thought they might build to a little bit more but you can get away with it because 
Uh, Moose ended up winning and beating Santana, and obviously he was not 100%. And you can continue this match, this feud. And this, this is one of the matches I would watch a second time, maybe even a third time. Uh, I'm invested in it. So, uh, you know, and it's not it's not two guys I know are going to wrestle for 45 minutes. You know, like it, it's going to be a, a time, you know, it's going to be a match that makes sense as far as the story. The, the length of the match is going to make sense. So I can get into something like that. So good match. I enjoyed that. Uh, Joe Hendry comes out and he makes matches now. So he let he he let us know that next week Moose and JDC are taking on the Hardy. So got a got a really big pop. Is JDC in the freaking system now. I mean, it looks like he kind of is just just add him to the system. You know what I mean? Um, but this might also be the match that JDC loses and they kick him out. I don't I don't know. But uh, I would prefer to see him remain in the system. But Joe Hendry, uh, he comes out and just makes matches. I, I understand you want to get Joe Hendry on every single card because people are there for him, but you got to be careful you don't overexpose him at the same time because every time he comes out, it's, it, it just feels very forced, like, okay, here's the forcing Joe Hendry on us type of thing. Because Joe Hendry, isn't he feuding with, like, Josh Alexander right now? Well, why? I mean, I guess he doesn't care about Frankie Kazarian anymore. I don't understand what his involvement in giving a shit about what the system is doing. Like, I, I understand Moose was the champion and this and this, but Joe Hendry didn't really come off as the main opponent in that match. It was kind of like Nick Nemeth. It was, it was, um, what's his fuck? Uh, Damn, I'm trying to think who it was. But uh, maybe I'm thinking of Santana here. Like, they were kind of teasing the feud with Santana. I just don't feel like there was something that was a clear-cut Moose and Joe Hendry. I could be wrong, but I, I just I'm feeling like it was not there. He's just coming out and, and, and making matches. And I, I'm probably wrong. There was probably some kind of storyline with them, but I just don't recall it. Spitfire come, uh, has a little backstage. Uh, they lost the belts like three or four weeks ago, and they're – Jody Thread is kicking the wall like she lost the belts seven minutes prior to this promo. Still very, very pissed off um, because the they did a cheat victory, even though it's really Frank the Goof's fault who didn't turn around, who took a minute to turn around and gave them plenty of chances to cheat, um, or plenty of, plenty of time to cheat. Apparently, we're going to get this, this fucking thing again. They only have two tag teams. They're just going to keep wrestling each other until Spitfire wins because there was a storyline of Spitfire going back to basics with Lars Fredrickson, who's not even around anymore. They're going to wrestle on Spit until Spitfire wins the championship. I have no interest in seeing that. That's probably where they're going to break the militia up because I don't understand why they don't have Masha just involved with the system like JDC is. That's I, I don't understand that. When, they, when I knew they were going to win the titles or at least challenge for them, I was saying, hey, that's going to be a good rub for Masha to the system. She doesn't have to be a member, but you involve her. But instead, they they act like they don't like her, which I don't I don't really care for that. It's, it's very weird, but they're going to wrestle until Spitfire wins, and then they're going to form some other kind of uh, tag team, and then Spitfire will lose to them. Jason Hotch gets the jobber entrance. <laughs> He apparently cut a promo like John Schuyler did, and um, they just showed him holding a mic, and that was it. Jobber entrance, so of course you think Jason Hotch is going to lose, right? Um, he takes on Ace Austin and a Rich Swan. I had a little more interest in this. Rich Swan, I love. Rich Swan's really the only small wrestler that I really give too much of a shit about. So uh, I was interested in this match. Now, when Chris Bay didn't win the first one, I was like, well, Ace Austin is going to win here. That's where they're going to kind of start the dissension. Um, thank God we had AJ Francis on commentary. He kind of saved me, like much like Frankie Kazarian did in the opening match. And uh, I enjoy this one as, as well. The first few minutes were all choreographed spots, which I don't do, which I don't enjoy. Um, but, then, but then the match got better as it went on. I was hoping Rich Swan was going to win this thing, but I was pretty positive Ace Austin was. I would have bet my dick that Jason Hotch wasn't winning this thing. And he sure enough won, and he's going to Ultimate X. Jason Hotch is very good. So 
this is going to be a very good opportunity for him to show what he can do. Uh, I always reference the match where he took on Rich Swan. I think this was Rich Swan was kind of on his losing streak, right? Real like prior to teaming up with AJ Francis. I think it was on Explosion, and it was very very good. So Jason Hotches is, is very good. So he's going to be a good addition addition to this. So it looks like they're revisiting ABC. Now they're both losers, right? They're so how are they going to get along? I'm not enjoying what they're doing with them. At first, I thought it was just a very poorly done storyline where they were teasing the dissension, but then they came together to overcome the odds and win the title. I thought that's what it was when they won at Slammiversary. It was a very poor way of getting there, but it looks like the storyline is not over. They're they're going to continue um, butting heads. So... I think they're going to lose the titles to the to the uh, not the system, but um, first class. That's kind of where I think it's going, and then they'll probably they'll probably break up. I I mean, there's no way they are this as a team surviving this because this is a storyline that is going on for a while. Um, I like longer stories. I just haven't really enjoyed this one from the beginning because I don't want them to break up. I just want them to be in each other's corner and wrestle singles matches and do something engaging that way, not fight each other. Uh, I don't have the card in front of me, but next week's show, um, aside from the jobber three-way, it's like Jay Vidal, who I thought was written out of the company, um, Laredo Kid, and... Someone else we don't see a whole lot. It's on the tip of my tongue. It's not Jake. Fuck, I don't remember. Oh, uh, Boopy. It's Boopy. So, yeah, kind of a... I would imagine Boopinder's going to win that thing. and They're going to try to try to heat him back up again. Laredo Kid, still waiting on his contractually obligated rematch for the digital media championship but they're not going to re- have him wrestle PCO. I don't think Jay Vidal's going to win. So uh yeah man, I would I wouldn't be surprised if Boopy wins this thing and they're going they're going to try to um try to heat him up again a little bit. This is emergence. This is not a an uh ultimate exit bound for glory, so they're going to throw some of the job guys in there. But aside from that, um again, I didn't write the car down, but I remember they're running it down next week. I was like this the, also looks like a pretty good show. I don't know if it's from uh, the Emergence site or if it's from Tampa. I'm not quite sure. I would imagine it's from Tampa. Um, but they've been doing some good television from there. Then we get the main event. Uh, Telegraph and Tom lets us know that uh, there's 30 minutes left in the show. So he has told us ahead of time that this that it's going to be a time limit draw. You know your boy is not watching a 30-minute match. So I want to say about, I did watch the entrances. Josh Alexander, they have spiced him up with the, with the theme. He still needs a little bit more. The, the, the promo, the heel promo stuff, the heel work is good. They got to spice him up a little more. And the reason I show this frustration with the Josh Alexanders, the Jake somethings, some of the, some of the you know, the Eddie Edwards over the years, guys who would be, be very bland on screen. The reason it bothers me so much is because if you think of food and you're having a bland plate of mashed potatoes, all you have to do is sprinkle some salt and you have a brand new fucking meal. It just takes a little bit and it's not bland anymore. You just have to do something. If you don't like vanilla ice cream, you add some fruit to it or you add some toppings, you add some syrup. It's very easy. Bland and vanilla and flavorless is the easiest thing to fix. All you have to do is do something and it improves. And that's guys come out and it's like, man, and I keep saying, yo, update this fucking presentation or fix the song or fix the entrance or fix, fix the way their, their gear, or the way they dress, the way they talk, something like spice it up just a little bit. It's not difficult. I hate, eggs by themselves scrambled like all these scrambled eggs with bacon uh, or in an omelet with mushrooms and fucking shit like that. I can't eat scrambled eggs by itself. 
my 11 year old son, who's like an oddly good cook for his age. He came to me the other morning. He said he wants some eggs. <laughs> he made scrambled eggs. And I said, no, I don't really like eggs by myself. And he's like, well, I threw paprika and lime juice. He's like, I'll try them. Try it. It's kind of odd, but he likes to, to, to experiment. And this shit was fucking delicious. I would have ate the whole plate. You know? Like, if you're a white girl and you don't want to have a white baby, like, you go fuck a Mexican. I mean, what? It is that simple to just do something. So at least with Josh, they are doing something. They could do probably do a little bit more, but right now uh, his character is being received so much more. Jake, who isn't even on this show, I've I've gone, you know, I've spoken to him at nauseum, walking around naked. You just do something. <laughs> no pun intended. So anyway, you know your boy is not watching a 30-minute match. This is not freaking happening. So I fast forwarded to the end. I know <laughs> makes me a horrible podcast, makes me a horrible or a horrible, excuse me, horrible podcast or a horrible fan. He doesn't like wrestling. I'm not watching a 30 minute time limit draw match. That's just not going to freaking happen. So fast forward to the end. Um, I really liked where they, they tried to, um, you know, cause telegraph and Tom let us know again. Uh, but they got to the, the draw. They're doing the five more minutes, the trope, the, you know, what they do for every time limit draw. Now five more minutes. Josh is having none of it. Rolls out of the ring. Nick Nemeth brings him back. Josh nut shots him and then is asking for five more minutes. Like that was some tremendous heel work. I said Josh's promo last week was my favorite part of the show. Like this was probably my favorite part of the show. That is amazing heel work. We forget that Josh was a heel for a long time in Impact. So this is not something he's just figuring out as he goes. You know, like he's he's played this role before. We're just seeing it as a singles wrestler now, but I thought that was uh tremendous. I love heat. I love when guys get heat. And I thought he got a lot of heat for that. Wanting to go five more minutes after he <laughs> shot at him. Uh, so I, I enjoy that quite a bit. And um, I got through this pretty good. I got through this uh, episode. It, it was a good show. I enjoyed it. Please don't hate me for not watching a 30 minute match. I just, I have a hard time. I know what the outcome is going to be. I know it's going to hit a time limit draw. So I know they're going to kick out of every, everything. And I got to hear on a kick out for 30 minutes. That is not, not going to freaking happen. Not this guy, not this guy. So um, again, I, I'm sorry that this came out on a Sunday night pretty late. I am um, frankly still trying to, ba I work seven days a week, whether it's my job, the reserves, my business. I, I do not have a job day where I just sit around. So right now I've just been very busy and I'm trying to balance how can I uh, manage my channel a little bit better. But, you know, I let you guys know probably from here on going out, there's going to be a little extra content, but we're probably just getting the weekly podcast. Uh, if I can get a little more content in, I will. But that's usually how it is for me at this time of the year in general, because I don't really enjoy the build for Bound for Glory. You know, you, you get the the podcast where I'm asking, where's the build? Where's the buzz? I seem to do that every single year. And the card is always a little underwhelming, you know, but I've got, I'm a little more optimistic this year that it's going to be a better card. So, uh, yeah, yeah, y'all. That's going to do it for me. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for uh, being here. I'm out. Peace.